everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Coco and Pete podcast. In fact, Pete, you should be doing our introduction. Why aren't you doing our introduction? You're so good. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. You know, <laughs> you know when people say, this bothers me when people say miss and things like that, and then it turns out not to be true. Like, no one can hear the sound of one hand clapping. Yeah, you can. <laughs> One hand I don't know why I mentioned that. Now. This is the sound of one hand clapping. I know why you mentioned that because the one hand clapping would be an indicator of the F one F U fiasco. Oh, the F one F U that Vegas. happened in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's like we we're so going to screw you over that we're going to make sure that no one can see the race except for that one time when they're driving by because we don't you know cover it or anything you know locally um, because we really just want to broadcast it to Europe. We're just using your background. It, it, Vegas looks cooler at night. During the day, it's pretty u- ugly sometimes. <clears throat> and then they manage to make it uglier. Uglier. I hiccup and got a double ugly. Uh, now there's a triple ugly. I got a triplet. I got a triple ugly out of it. You got a fugly? Because was F1. I got a fugly. fugly. Oh, yeah. Yes. The F1 FU. It's. <laughs> you made me very fancy. Let's take the gate. Yeah. <laughs> Fine for Vu. <laughs> It's a new form that. of new form of ubby dubby talk. <laughs> no one's ever going to get that reference. That's okay. Continue. I don't think you got that reference. No, I didn't. It's from a show that before you were born. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, speaking Believe of being was. born, how did your mom like coming out to Las Vegas? I heard she, heard she was out recently. My mom's happiness and joy is juxtaposed to my misery. So the happier she is, the more miserable I get when she's here. <clears throat> so we had to drive six hours to this wedding. And I know I did a whole thing about weddings are a waste of time, unless you can figure out a way not to cost it. I mean, after all, it's just a commitment ceremony. You're actually getting the license from the judge. So you want everyone to show up. Make it a freaking potluck. Everyone just bring a little something, and we'll have the joy with each other. And then bring us money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. That'd be great. I'm fine. I buy some food for the, how many people are there. All right. I'll bring the cups. You know, who brings the OJ? You know, who's going to get the hot dogs, get a grill going, you know, put it in someone's backyard. Don't invite like everybody on the planet. You don't give up rats. Fuck about. You know what was funny about the wedding? <laughs> the family on my niece's side, including her, counts as six people. And since I have somebody with me, it's still six people when she's getting married, right? My my um my uh, nephew gave her away because he actually raised her, and we thought that was a good idea. So we're sitting behind the the row that says reserved because we don't go to a, hot, a whole lot of weddings in our family. We're like fuck it, and we go, who's that reserved for? Oh, for the immediate family. Now here we are, the hillbillies sitting behind the reserved section, not realizing that's Did for you us. Say So, yeah. So we're just humming the Beverly Hillbillies themes as we go to the front. This is a story about marriage. Oh, we get to be the fancy chairs up front. See, we usually go to funerals. We know we're front row for that. (laughs) But the marriages, you can count them on a hand. (laughs) (laughs) When you're talking about formal weddings and things like that, one, our family, I can only remember one. That's it. Rest of it's like, and fuck it. <laughs> so speaking of fuck it, did your mom like mm-hmm. Las Vegas though before you guys took up on your trip? Oh, she loved it because I'm paying for everything. Um, you know, it's like, let's go out to eat. Let's do this. I think it's over there. I live here. Shut up, woman. So that was kind of what it was like. You might think I'm being mean to my mom, but my mom's a sucky no. was a sucky mom. And the thing is, she'll admit it. If you ask her, were you a good mom? No, no, I wasn't a good mom. I was horrible. She'll tell you. I wasn't raised by anyone normal. My dad was a smuggler and my mom was a dancer, not a striptease dancer. Belly dancer sometimes. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing. We will watch the first person choke to death on live television or live our podcast. Wouldn't be the first time. <coughs> That's true. I, I, I do like. Things that I like to do is watching people die live on the air, you know, because I believe in reincarnation, so I don't think it's a bad thing. 
And the, and the second thing I like to watch is people who react to sporting events and it's their team and their team just lost. Oh, I just love watching them lose it. I'm like, really? You have a poor set of priorities. I That's bet why you I've vote. failed so, so miserably here because everybody lost and you heard everyone yeah. complaining. It was like a, a cacophony of sound of the agony of the freaking Formula yeah. One FU experience. That's really what it was. One F1 it was FU, FU experience. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you go to Vegas for a show for um, playing a little gambling, you know, eating and then getting shocked at the sticker price of something is two people go out to eat here. Uh, six people could be over. It could be close to $700, you know, and if it, but if you know where the locals go, it's not so bad. Food's the same. They get the same steak delivery, same lobster delivery, but there's a lot of reasons for the high price. One gouging and one, the cost of living, the rent for the location, you know, they're not trying to screw you over. They try to give you a good environment. And yes. I, when I think of Formula One, I don't think of Vegas. They had it in Texas, like you said, in an earlier episode. And I'd rather go to Texas and see it. That's where you're going to have your clientele go there. Like people think like uh, wrestling is good for Vegas. No, um, it's just not the town for it. Even though they have wrestling shows here, they barely fill it. Um, but here, MMA fight, a, a once in a lifetime thing that has a short horizon. A boxing match is either three minutes or there's a free match. You know what I mean? And you go out and gamble, you know, and you, and you rub elbows with a lot of people. That's why you do that. Mm. Or you hang out by the door, you know, and you, as they come out, you know, with the camera and try not to get arrested for stalking. But they defunded the police here, so I guess you could do it. <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> that really helped out F1 as well, everyone. Don't forget. Uh, yeah, look, uh, it's always good to have a little crime sp spike because you cover up all the places that you, people can see you, but then people start ripping that down. So they made it so you can't see anything and you get robbed. I'm sorry. There's a reason why we carry guns in Las Vegas. <laughs> True. <laughs> They'll just choose a tourist. Yeah. Oh my God. They'll rob a tourist. They won't rob a. a, a the odds of robbing a local. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And in, in the long run, and I said it to you, and you corrected me, I said that the police here were no joke. Well, that was my experience for the past. Your yeah. recent experience dealing with properties and things like that, and not knowing they defunded the police here, and I didn't know that we were a sanctuary city, wondering why there was such a huge tick up in crime. It's one thing being robbed by people who speak English, but robbed by people who don't speak English is much more difficult. You know, they'll say, give me your money. And you're like, what you say? Because you don't know what they're saying because they didn't say it in English. You know, if I'm going to be robbed, I'm going to be robbed by an American, damn it, or someone who's legally in the country. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I can't tell you that. Any of the experiences I've had have been Sorry. anybody like they're, they're, they're locals. The, this influx is a push from it's almost like the homeless have been pushed in further by because they're being pushed in by yeah. whatever factors, but they're going to the properties in the residences. It's not to me. I mean, I can't even, and that reminds me, yeah. I'm just telling you right now, Pete, you know, Peter and I, we live in a, a better area than what you would be accustomed to by the strip, right? We don't live yeah. in that, that yeah. area. Um, I didn't tell you, I got, I had someone try to break in twice, two nights in a row last week. That's in your house? Deal. Yes. <coughs> and I'm in what? Half a mile from you. A mile yeah. Away. Wow. I'm not pleased. Well, where I'm in, tucked in, the, the rule is if you have a flag, the odds are you're armed. So <laughs> robbing us, we're always Robert. home. Not a good idea. <laughs> I was not happy. Oh, go all the way through. Go hell all the way through. Two nights in a row. You know how people talk about a harrowing experience when you get if, if you had to kill someone or whatever. I'm over that <laughs> harrowing experience. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all, apparently, with me. <laughs> not an issue. Not an issue. But we have to be prepared. Besides, like, nothing to take. About that, you know. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good, and it's even hard to prep here because. People find out what you got, they're going to steal it. You know, you do have to work together with neighbors and things. Um, you know, who watches what? This area is lucky. There's cameras everywhere. The little section I'm in, 
we see everything going on and we talk to each other. And since we know who lives where, people, because we, we, we apparently have some, uh, you know, lady yelling, Amna, Amna, somewhere around in the neighborhood. That's to our advantage. Um, at least we know if it's something that's not supposed to be here. And there's a roving security guard that will call the police, too. They know who all the neighbors are. Um, so, but it doesn't mean someone can't take your shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. But true. it's, it, yeah, but it's getting more and more dangerous. Someone's yeah. in a fight for survival out there. But, you know, you pick an area that has doesn't have its own food. You know, everything has to be brought in here. I believe there's a pig farm somewhere. <laughs> but it's not like we have, you know, amber waves of grain. We've got sand and desert blows around. Lots of rocks <laughs> to hide those bodies under. <laughs> yeah. You're not even allowed to build any pools anymore. That's the below ground kind. And... No. And they're taking out so, all the grass everywhere so that they can't water the grass. I'm like, that is the most ignorant yeah. crap. Yeah. It's not going to bring you so, more weather. So this used to be a, a nice area. It used to be a watering hole from people coming across the country. So it had its own indigenous water. And people think, well, the Vegas people should stop using that much water. We have a limit. California sucks up our water and doesn't have a limit. Do you know how much we? Why are we giving our water to California? Not only California. I don't know the exact number. It is fifteen percent of the water <coughs> we get to Las Vegas <coughs> residents, and they just reduced it to ten. Ten percent goes to uh, Las Vegas residents. The rest goes to California, Arizona, and Mexico. So. Why are you guys pissed yep. at us? Why are you guys <coughs> killing us over it? Because it's more expensive yeah. and they, the water usage goes everywhere else. I'm not saying don't give them the water. I'm just saying stop punishing no. us for it. Yeah, get a desalination plant. Yeah, it costs about a billion dollars. Well, when you're printing money anyway and giving it away to other countries, you know, you could have set aside a billion, I don't know, drinking water. <laughs> that would have been a good idea. When you move into a desert, you know what's going to happen to you. But yet everyone shows up. I want all my stuff taken care of. God damn it. I want my food right. all packaged in a grocery store, but I'm going to complain how you got it there. I want to plug in things to destroy the entire electric grill that goes. There's California's east and west coast. But to make the electricity, they haven't made a power plant since the 70s. Most of them are on coal. You dumb, ignorant, mutter effers. <sighs> You don't know how anything works, but you scream and yell that you got to have it. God damn it. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of hearing you stupidic people. And you vote. And you're the majority of the idiots. And drive. This is why I believe you're in the electric college. <laughs> oh, my God. They don't even want to drive anymore. They want the cars to drive themselves. I'm fine. <laughs> send them right to the wacky. You know, send them. Give them. You know, I'm fine. If they want cradle to the grave. You know, from, from, you know, everything taken care of, put them in a hospital in a straitjacket and we feed them three meals a day so they don't fuck everything else up because that's what they do. Sorry. I love the rant. <laughs> Tell him, Pete. Tell him. <laughs> Pete on the rant. This got started when someone said they were. Rant. This started when someone said they were against the Electoral College. It should be a majority. And my answer is F you. 80% of the population, population lives on the east side of, um, of, the, uh, uh, of the Mississippi. 20 live on the, on the other side. The majority are housed in the bigger cities, mostly Los Angeles, San Francisco. If you're just going by majority votes, do you think you're going to give a rat's ass about the center states? Where are you going to campaign to get the majority of your votes? Where the majority of the people are? Screw those people. All that would have cost is anarchy and other states breaking away into their own countries because they would have been ignored. That's why they have the small state, large state compromise. That's why California can't bully the three states on its right and then the states above it. Instead, Instead, they just shove their stupidity up like ooze going all the way across all the pretty places so they can destroy that too and become the majority of those electric college places. But the electric college has a little fixing that it does. As they leave the other place, it, they figure out the mathematics. That one loses one and then other ones gain. So there was a reason why they did it. 
I do not want the majority because the masses are asses telling me what goes on. I'm sorry. There should actually be a test, a citizen test before you before you vote or make voting a national holiday. No pre-voting. A national <laughs> holiday. And you know what you want. It's a paid national holiday if you got a job. You could just not even go to the voting place, but you don't show up with an absentee anything. You've got to drag your ass, you know, the part on the back of your front, to the voting place. You vote. They know how many people went in there, and that's how many votes should be in there. Not more, not less, not changed, one way or the other. And then when it's counted... It should be seen by anyone. It's recorded. Not who did it. Just the number of counts that goes in. Immediately. That's how we start picking national elections. State elections, stuff up to states. They can do what they want. But a presidential election, is how, that's how it goes. So if you're complaining at all about it, one side cheated, the other side cheated, that's what will solve it. Or do what the Iraqis did. Hell, the Iraqis even dipped their finger in some blue thing to vote for people that would not listen to them. <laughs> is that what they I did? blame England. Well, yeah. as you should. The first England election, yeah. Because you couldn't come in and vote again. You had to vote in person, and you couldn't vote again if you had that um, that black ink on your finger. Oh, it was blue, blue ink on your finger. Wow. The Iraqis did that. <laughs> Males, of course, not females. No, females could vote too. In Iraq? I'm surprised. It's, I believe they did. Other uh, places yeah. like Iran, uh, I must be thinking of. Yeah. Like in Japan, they had the first females electing after MacArthur took over. Now y'all vote. Made it, made it a complete democracy. Democracies fail just the way they're designed. We're, we're a um, representative government. So who are you voting for? A person represent what you think? What you think would be good? No, nah, no, nah, it's a football game. I'm for so-and-so. Hoo-ah! I'm voting for that no matter what because the alternative worse. They should run it with at least four people, and there are more than four people on the ballot, and not telling you what they're for. So you had to actually go look it up or read it. You know, they could do a little shorthand blurb. That's how, that's how they did in Burbank. You gave a blurb of what you stood for, and that's how they decided who to vote for. And if you didn't do what you're going to do, they just kicked your ass out. That's what I liked about Burbank. <laughs> Back to Burbank. Burbank's the king. <laughs> yeah, but my, mine was going to say, whatever you want. According to those signs, might be. The <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I blame everything on England. It's all their fault for everything right now. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. Is. We don't like to admit. I don't it, know. I went into that. Yeah, mind right. you, I'm, this is still an economic show. Economics start with the politicians, you know, and ourselves. We have a different economics than they do, and I think I said this before, so I'm going to go through it really quick. There's municipal economics. That's the area you're in, the municipality. That could be a city, you know, but then there's, it branches out into, uh, into your counties, in, in our case, counties, parishes in uh, Louisiana. Then it branches out into state, and then from state to country, from country to world, and each one of those have their in, internal economics. Every one of these people want a piece of all that, if you don't like the way it is, and you voted for the people you don't like, it's your fault. And I'm sick of it. We blame all the politicians, which I do all the time, which is fun. But how did that politician get there? The money comes from those in charge. That's what we call the deep state, which is not that deep. It's rather shallow. <laughs> but they still can't win without you vote. Let's assume everything's on the up and up. You did that. You're the one that voted. And then you don't like it and you move and you do it again. I don't care to know any of you for that. If you want to leave the channel, go ahead. We only got two freaking people on it right now. <laughs> I don't <really> care. <laughs> I'm going to start right now. It is your <laughs> fault. <laughs> Dumbasses. Yeah, no. And by true. the way, it I'm not a conservative. Just so they know, I'm not a conservative. People think I am. I'm fiscally conservative. Socially, I'm a civil libertarian. So now you all know I've announced it. I'm a libertarian. So I'm watching that uh, guy got elected down in Argentina, the first libertarian to get elected to a country, a whole country. 
And he's already kicking ass. We don't need that. I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to feed yourselves instead of have the government have to plan it all out. You all freaking starved. <laughs> We're getting rid of that, and that, and that, and that. Less government. Let's see how it works out. Because there's something called a pink wave that goes down there, and that has something to do with uh, sexual preferences. The pink wave is the leftists that took over each country down in Central America and South America. And now we've proven it doesn't work. It never works. Just given enough time, it falls in on itself. So the first libertarian, he's not conservative, he's not, but he's fiscally conservative. He's not so you do what you want, you're free. You want to dance around any way you want to, call yourself whatever. He's not mandating any of that stuff. He only cares how the economics works, and he's giving the money back to the people. If a little Argentina shows us up, you know you're voting wrong. You know something went wrong somewhere. That's your friggin' fault. I'm sorry, I got emotional about that one. <laughs> You should I'm get done. emotional about that right because now. it's the future of our country. It's the present day of our country. And people are like, they're asleep at the wheel. They're like, oh, yeah, this guy was a great president. Whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. What are you doing about it now? What are you doing about it today? Where are we at yeah. now? Stop complaining. Get get uh, to it. I'm, I mean, give, get, let me get a quicker talk? background, too, because, because it might get into identity politics. We might see that on the bottom. Screw you, too. <laughs> My family started, um, we made $7,000 a year. A year. My mom was raising, my dad did nothing. And if you want to get into what everybody is, I'm German, Irish, Italian. On the Italian side, I got North African. So, yes, I got a little a little dunkless in me, and I love every minute of it. So, shut the f- up. <laughs> how this works. I saw a lady on a talk show saying that cis white men were the reason why Capitalist, I mean, uh, uh, it, it, everything's wrong here. You know, we should have this, this, and this. Should all be free. And mind you, all, everything being free only works in small numbers. And there's a way to do it. If we did an episode on it, I would actually tell you the way to do it. It doesn't work on large scale. And it's, it's a law of numbers, where resources go, whole nother debate. So he goes, well, show me someplace that works. You know, and so she said, Western Europe. That's where the white people come from. <laughs> I can't yeah. get any whiter than that. <laughs> and it doesn't work. <laughs> Another one that bothered me was, I'm sorry, I'm just going to let it all out now. Please do. Another one that, yeah, another one that really bothered me when they go, colonization of Christianity was a white person's thing. No, it's not. It's from North Africa. What do you think Israel is? <laughs> Everyone who started that religion has a nice little shade of brown to them. They're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and they the brought it cut. to Europe, Beautiful. which were worshiping, you know, pantheons. By that time, you were down to uh, uh, the Roman gods and Greek gods were the same gods. And then somewhere in there you had, um, uh, you know, Thor and all those people, which, by the way, are, a lot of our weekdays are named afterward. Who took over who? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. That's what happened. I just, when people open their mouths... You're not sure how intelligent they are or ignorant they are until the words come through the voice box. Then you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> they're being they can't name. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. They're called useful idiots. They can't even name two countries. There's a challenge right now. Sit at home, name two countries that are not the United States. Then go look up to see if you said stupid shit like New Mexico. <laughs> And be like, London, that's not a country. <laughs> that's not a country. Here's a tough one. Excluding the channel, how many countries touch the border of France? Just that. Tell him, Pete. Tell him. All right. We'll go north to Belgium. We're working around Belgium with Luxembourg. Luxembourg, we have Germany. Germany, we have Switzerland. Next to Switzerland, we have uh, Italy. Next to Italy, you have Spain. Then you have Endoria and Monaco. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I joined the military because, not because I just wanted to pay for college. Because I actually had my heart that I felt I had to do something because my family were from different places. The German side of the family from Germany. The Italians, well, they did what Italians do. And the Irish, well, you know the difference between an Irish wedding and an Irish wake. One drunk. But my great grandfather was the head, one of the riveters of the Titanic, the Olympia, and and the um, oh, it's the Titanic, Britannia, 
they all sunk at some point. So the joke of the family was, of course, you're Ireland's champion and swimmer because you can't build a boat that doesn't sink. But <laughs> he, utter survival. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> the point is, I know where things are. I know where China is. I can point. I know where Vietnam is. I know where Korea is. I know a lot of their politics. I'm a bad boy. I can tell you most of Africa, but you, I lose some of the name changes because I'm looking at the history, historical name, and then they would change their name, things like that. Um, but still, I can tell you where it's at. I can tell you what their import exports are. By the way, United States fits in Africa. And by the way, Africa is not a friggin' country. <laughs> just, just to point that out there. Most people don't know where they are, where they're going, why they're here. So their solution is to tell us we take care of them from cradle to grave and they don't have to work. That means you're friggin' useless. Useless. That's what you are. If you don't even want to try, I'm happy to help anyone wants to try. You fall, I want to net, grab you, put you back up. Don't care who you are. But if you don't frickin' try, I will laugh at you as you fail. If you learn from your failure and you try again, I might give you money to succeed because on the second try, third try, fourth try, up to, up to 10 tries, you're going to succeed in one of those things because you're trying. Try it anything. I don't care what it is. But if you're sitting on your ass, especially if you're typing in your mom's basement right now, firing away at me, if that's what it needs to economically wake you dumbasses up, fine. And if that's all you're doing, and you don't have a podcast arguing about something else where you might make some money. Fuck you too. Done. <laughs> that was brilliant, Pete. Wow. <laughs> I love hearing your rant. It is uh, spot on and so helpful in getting people to listen. Listen, people. Hello. Yeah, no, You're trying to think sad. <laughs> huh? He covered it all. This is what happens when I'm sick. When I'm not feeling well, I got nothing that covers me. I pay for everything myself, and I don't usually have enough money to do it. So I, I, I break a teeth, tooth, I live with it, <sighs> you know, until I save the money up to do it. I don't need the help. I just do it myself because I try. And I help other people, too. You already know I give away most of my money. Yes, I do know Go that. find it. I gave it away. I didn't even say who it went to. I just gave it away. Actually, I know who, who they go to. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of what you're doing though is that you don't say where it goes that's where that's what's so awesome mm -hmm. that's what god asks us to do it's, so. it's true charity oh, no, I, I don't, I don't use the text oh no I, not that <laughs> <laughs> oh not allowed to say that i think that's all i got left in me yeah so but so while you get on your rants i love your rants Oh, my rants are off. You, uh, like, oh, here's a rant that you should start. Why do people that squat in your property, you catch them, have this need to take off their clothes and start jumping over fences? Explain that one to me. Uh, front yard and backyard, front door, <laughs> back door, side door, windows, doors, gates. And then, of course, um, it is certainly the responsibility of the property manager to have uh, known that ahead of time, which is really awesome. <laughs> yeah. This actually happened to her. These are the people that don't try. This is what they're reduced to. <clears throat> it's true. It's true. It can be, you know, it's a bizarre state to be that to think that people are acting the way they are. But, mm. but look, these are all indicators of what's going on. We got to do something about it. That's why we're fired up. We give a crap of what the hell's going on. We're going to do something mm. about it. So you guys do something about it. And I know if you're listening, you're going to do something about it. Cause if you're listening and you're not doing mm. anything about it, there's something wrong with you. Cause you're listening. Mm -hmm. Cause you care. You're listening. Cause it's something up and there is something you can do about it. There's something you can get involved in. I don't care if you're running for, for city council in Burbank, or if you're going to be a volunteer police officer in Las Vegas, Nevada, I don't mm -hmm. care which one it is. You're going to do, you're going to do something, do something to make something positive take place. And don't tell me it's going to be, mm -hmm. I'm going to be changing the global temperature. Cause that is going to take a hundred to 200 to 5,000 years to change anyway. And you'll be totally ineffective. Yeah. So pick something yeah. that's going to be effective and stop getting on the boat now, where it's like oh it's something if I you if you of. already have money and you just want to give it to that your charity and you hire people in your charity i'm good with that even if, if it doesn't work at least someone's working i'm okay with that i'm okay with that i just I, I i we don't have enough time where i you, you start to get in the one that i can literally prove the opposite <laughs> you know <laughs> of us doing episode, stuff we're so we'll, we'll, we will do that. We're going to talk about it in the All next right. episode. But I'll tell you what, Pete, I love your passion. Go, Pete, go. You're right. Do it. It's correct. <laughs> I love it. And if you're not, am I going to end up with these talks? 
See, Coco protects me for these other talk shows she does because I'll just, I'll get them canceled. <laughs> Start saying stuff. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being canceled. Yeah. It doesn't matter. If people, <sighs> it, it doesn't matter if, look, what's really important if people don't recognize, like it, it's not important to be popular. What's important that you're running ethically, you're doing things right. You're not screwing with other people. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Stop mm -hmm. looking around. Yeah. Stop looking around. So who cares if people are listening to what's mm -hmm. up? Because if they don't want to hear it, they're not going to hear it. And they're going to, they are going to cancel you out. But that is not what's important mm -hmm. because all you got to do is what Pete just said, start again. So you start we again you to be back and be present next time, guys, we care about you. We care about what's going on for you. So we ask you to hit the like and subscribe. Yeah. Share this with somebody, get fired up. And we look forward to you guys coming back, come back for another episode. So, My head is I'm going to do the 10 second freeze. freeze. Cause that's what we do. 10, ten second freeze. Oh. Give them a fist. <coughs> Fisting. <laughs>